Good evening and a very warm welcome to the hour's news package with radio and television Tonga News for tonight. Making headlines, an U.S. embassy to be established here in Tonga. People need to prepare for a time the monkeypox virus arrives to the country from New Zealand. And the Legislative Assembly of Tonga offers condolences on the passing of the late former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Now I'm Vaithana Dobola with the stories in detail. Tongans who wish to travel to Fiji to apply for a visa to the United States have always found it challenging. However, a solution has now been put in place to make things easier. This comes after the Honorable Prime Minister, Hwaka Meliko, who is in Suva, Fiji, confirmed to Radio Tonga News this afternoon that the U.S. government has approved the establishment of a U.S. embassy in Nukalofa. At the moment, applying for a U.S. visa requires Tongans to travel to Fiji, and applying for one is expensive. The United States Vice President Kamala Harris announced major interventions at the Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting, announcing that America will substantially ramp up its presence in the region. This includes plans to open two new embassies of the United States in the region, one here in Tonga and another in the Kiri Pass, with plans to reopen its embassy in the Solomon Islands. She also announced plans to re-establish the United States Agency for International Development known as USAID Regional Mission in Fiji and bring Peace Corps volunteers back into the region. Meanwhile, Tonga's Honorable Foreign Affairs Minister Fikita Mwela Utikamano told Radio Tonga News this morning that the meeting in Suva has enabled negotiations with other economic stakeholders for future funds for Tonga through different economic assistances. However, Vice President Kamala Harris also announced in the United States Forum the appointment of a new envoy to the Pacific Islands Forum and pledged an additional 500 million U.S. dollars in funding to the Forum Fisheries Agency in return for fishing rights and dedications of its ties with Pacific nations. The Ministry of Health now have another phone in their sight to worry about. After the recent arrival of monkeypox in New Zealand, as Tonga continues to deal with COVID-19, the rhinovirus and flu. New Zealand has recorded two cases of monkeypox and there are concerns it might easily pass through our borders from passengers arriving from Aotearoa. Alice Dubo has more on that story. New Zealand has recorded two cases of monkeypox and there are concerns it might easily pass through our borders from passengers arriving from Aotearoa. The Acting Director of Health, Dr. Anna Kaola, is now urging the public to be prepared and to continue taking preventative measures and to practice good hygiene to minimize the spreading of COVID-19, rhinovirus, the flu, and monkeypox once it reaches the country. She added that the virus can spread from person to person through direct contact with a rash, scabs, or body fluids, of an infected person. The symptoms of a monkeypox can include fever, headache, muscle aches and backache, swollen lymph nodes, gels, exhaustion and a rash that can look like pimples or blisters that appears on the face, inside the mouth and on other parts of the body like the hands, feet, chest and genitals. Dr. Gaola urges people to always wash their hands, practice a social distancing and wear face masks every time. She also says that Tonga can't stop the monkeypox if it arrives at our border like COVID-19 because travelling between New Zealand and Tonga won't stop. But the question is, will the border open next month if the monkeypox situation worsens? The virus first appeared in Europe and came through Australia and now New Zealand. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm RDC Dubo. The chairman of the whole House Committee of the Legislative Assembly of Tonga, Lord Vaya, presented a condolences call at the Japanese Embassy office in Nukalofa yesterday. On behalf of the Lord Speaker in the Legislative Assembly of Tonga, in a condolence of the late Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe. Mark Ake will tell you more on that story. The chairman of the whole House Committee of the Legislative Assembly of Tonga, Lord Vaya, said Abe was a towering figure in Japanese politics and diplomacy and is remembered by members of the Legislative Assembly of Tonga as a transformational and exceptional leader. Lord Vaya added that Abe elevated Japan and Tonga's relations to where it is today. 
with monumental contribution to our people's prosperity in education, health, infrastructure, energy, climate change, and more. During the program, official condolence letters addressed to the President of the House of Councillors of Japan and also to the Speaker of the House of Representatives of Japan were presented by Lord Vaya. It is understood that the Legislative Assembly of Tonga and Japan's National Diet has maintained working relations over the past decades. Throughout the devastation, on the 15th of January, members of the National Diet of Japan contributed funds that went towards the disaster relief following the volcanic eruption and COVID-19 efforts in Tonga early in the year. Meanwhile, Pacific leaders have also expressed their condolences, such as Fiji's Prime Minister Frank Panimarama calling Abe a true friend to Fiji and a model for every leader. Papua New Guinea's caretaker Prime Minister James Marape credited him for initiating numerous development projects in his country, and New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern described Abe as a kind man who helped usher through many complex negotiations. The numbers of leaders attending the Pacific Islands Forum Summit in Suva, Fiji has dropped further, with both the President of the Marshall Islands and the Cook Islands Prime Minister pulling out. It was revealed last weekend that the Kerry Pass President, Taneti Ma'ama, would not attend the gathering as his nation had formally withdrawn from the forum. Nauru's President, Lionel Ainimea, was also understood not to be attending because of the soaring levels of COVID-19 in his country. Now the Cook Islands Prime Minister Mark Brown has also pulled out, saying he wants to focus on his country's election, which is to be held in three weeks. And Marshall Islands President David Kapua has said he would have attended the summit but was not able to because of a legislatively binding action to terminate the country's membership in the forum. That legislation had resulted from the five Micronesian leaders threatening to pull out 18 months ago over a failure of their nominee to the given Secretary Generalship. A forum committee announced last month that a remedy had been found for this rift and that it would be voted on this week's meeting. Kapua announced that the Marshall Islands is no longer a member of the forum and has not been so since March of this year. And the people of the Fungawailahi in Waikonitoa are delighted and excited for the upcoming commissioning of the sea vessel this weekend. This was confirmed by the secretary of the two newest committee, Officer Miki, who says they have completed necessary paperwork needed for the vessel. Alice Itubo with the details. The vessel will be officially commissioned at the Wuna Wharf on Saturday the 16th of June by the guest of honour nobles representative of the Tuniwas, Prince Kalanivalu Fotofili. The vessel was initially set to be commissioned last month, but it was postponed due as the paperwork wasn't completed at the time. Ofasimiki says after its commission, the boat will first travel to the Fungawailahi and Vaigonu Dowa, so the two communities can take a look at the outcome of their work. Afterwards, the vessel will start serving the people of Tonga through sea transportation. The vessel is 75 meter long, 10.8 meter wide, and is capable of carrying 650 tons and more than 200 passengers. The vessel is worth more than half a million of the US dollars. Reporting for radio and television Tonga News, I'm Alice Dubo. Sports is up next with Mark Ake, brought to you with thanks to the kind sponsorship of Pacific Timber and Hardware. To rugby league, the New South Wales Blues regular security guard Konisit Liutai is going strong for eight years in his role. He first acquired his role in 2014 and hasn't looked back since. Liutai is part of the Sydney-based company E Group and is tasked with keeping the New South Wales players safe and most importantly clear of COVID-19. Liutai says his job has to do with earning the players trust and respect and he has to be with them from sunup to sundown. Liu Dai tells Blues players every minute of each day, keeping them outside from potential trouble and ensuring they abide by COVID protocols. He must make sure they are clear from any controversy that might damage their reputation and the sport's reputation as well. Liu Dai follows the team around and hires outside help for every state the team is in and he must make sure that outsiders don't enter the team's COVID bubble. He said that he got the opportunity as security 
when he used to work at numerous rugby stadiums for different games, including internationals, between Tonga and Samoa. However, with the third state of origin a few hours away, Liu Tai says the team is in really good condition and that the physios and doctors are happy with their health and well-being. Liu Tai encourages youth from Tonga to not stop trying to make a career in rugby league as there are many opportunities and pathways for them to take and that he can introduce them to professionals and coaches if they need help. He added that one of New South Wales Islander players recently told him that he bought a house for his mother and this was really happy news as it shows how far players can make it in the sport to support their families. To football, Tonga Football Association or TFA have signed plans for a new facility to be built at their headquarters in Ototonga. Tonga Football will build a stadium with a seat capacity of 500. The signing ceremony to begin the construction was held today at the TFA conference room in Ototonga. The necessary documents were signed by the association's president, Lord Veihala, and general manager of Dexin Construction Limited, Tonga Football General Secretary and CEO Louis Aho, as well as the Dexin Limited project manager, were also present as witnesses. The supervisor of the project is the ITS Pacific Limited CEO, Malakai Wagasiwola. Construction is expected to take 12 to 18 months and is estimated to be worth 8 million paanga. However, facilities within the stadium will include changing rooms for the teams, media and internet facilities, referee room, competition, medical room for doctors, night lights, a parking area, and of course, an international pitch. That wraps up this evening's news package, but before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. An U.S. embassy to be established here in Tonga. People need to prepare for a time. The monkeypox virus arrives to the country from New Zealand. And the Legislative Assembly of Tonga offers condolences on the passing of the late former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Bafanato Bola. Good evening.